Welcome to the Accelerate Church TV broadcast. We are so glad that you were tuning in with us today. We are excited because Pastor Jeremy is currently teaching on give no place. This is a basic fundamental. As Christians, we are to give no place to the enemy. Let's head into the sanctuary right now with Pastor Jeremy File. Unrepented of sin is an open door to the enemy. Sin allows the enemy to touch us. Do you see why this is pertinent, pertinent to this message in this series? What am I telling you? We've got to get out of sin if we're going to shut the door on the devil. He has no legal right to our life. But if you don't keep yourself, you're going to be stinky and hairy and unkept. And the wicked one says, I can touch them. They're not still under that blood any longer. You're under the blood of Jesus. He don't want nothing to do with the blood. Now, for more clarity on this and getting out of sin, here's how we do it. I love how the word makes it so simple. Is that all I got to do is confess? Well, there's another action part. Proverbs 28, 13 says it. Oh, it's so good. Look at it. Say it with me. Thank God for the word. It says, he who covers his sins will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have what? Well, this is a different level of mercy. God's been merciful to humanity. He sent his son. <laughs> we all deserve hell. Be very careful listening to anyone that tells you, you deserve this. You do. I just, it just goes against me. I don't care who it is. I've had people I really, really respect in my life tell me, well, you deserve that. You know what? It always rubs me the wrong way because I deserve hell, and I know it. I know it. I mean, I haven't always been Mr. Preacher living for God, doing what I do now. But I was raised in a preacher's home. I was under the control of a man that loved me and a woman that loved me and prayed for me and made me obey and do all that stuff. But I know my own heart well enough to know that there was some things going on in my life that I hadn't forsaken, but I had confessed it. And you need to know this. Why? Because you got to give no place in your life anywhere to the devil. So if the Lord deals with you about something, then guess what? You've got to pay attention to that. So you confess and forsake. Confess and forsake. I want you to say it with me one time. Ready? Confess and forsake. Let's say it again. Confess and forsake. You got that? That's Bible. You confess and forsake. The Holy Spirit knew when he wrote this, and you take it through the cross, it applies. That people would try to take advantage, and a lot of people do take advantage of God. I've been there myself before. Well, I'll just confess it. Lord, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But see, are you going to forsake it? Well, I confessed it the other day, and that should have been good enough. No, no, no. You've got to forsake it. Everybody say forsake. That means you don't keep going with it. Now, I want you to catch this. It's them that will have mercy. I got to thinking about this, and it's very similar to the way, you know, I, I had uh, surgery. I won't talk real deep about it, but I had surgery last year, and it was a real minor surgery. And I go, and they gave me a certain drug. A doctor gave it to me in the office, and... I have, it literally blocked my memory for a time period, which really bugged me, really bothered me, right? And that doctor told me, he said, see, this is why these get out here on the street and people end up doing stuff and they don't even remember doing it because they're doing that and it's not under the direction of a professional. We all know this, right? I'm not talking to you about something you haven't heard about. However, in this country, in our own city, there's a whole world that hopefully none of you know about. I, I would like to think that. I, I know for sure a police officer that goes here has to deal with it. That's different because he's coming against it. Hopefully you don't participate in it. But there's a whole drug world going on in this city. And right down I-40, you know, I was driving down I-40 for quite a few miles the other day. And I just think to myself, I, you're passing people left and right. 
And I'm just telling you, man, that's one of the main highways distributing drugs up and down the highways of the United States of America is on I-40. One of the state troopers that's out here east of town, he's a professional at spotting these guys, and he's busted. How many times has that been in the news? At Groom, where there's a big cross. Sozo was busted with all these, you know, worth millions of dollars of what is it? Drugs being pushed. So I'm, why am I bringing this up? Because churches have become illegal pushers of mercy. They don't tell people you've got to confess and forsake. What they do is they mix mercy with grace and make it one big jambalaya for you to eat. But there's a difference in the grace of God, his empowerment to say no, and his mercy in your life. There's a sure way for God to have mercy upon you, and here's what it is. You have to confess. That means you say what God says about it. See, porn isn't something you get into because you're a man or a woman now, and I just have needs. No, no, no. That's adultery in the heart. And until you're ready to call it that, you're not really ready to find mercy. But see, you can't just call it that. You've got to then forsake it. And notice, this is where there's a massive breakdown. Oh, but God's so merciful. He's so merciful. You've got to confess and forsake. Now, let's not make this too difficult. It's not too difficult. If God says confess and forsake, what do you need to do? Confess and forsake. He never tells you to do something you can't do. So, yeah, there's drugs that are prescribed by doctors, and it's not evil uh, for them to prescribe that. Now, you can get addicted to that. I understand there's a danger, but I I'm not trying to get off on a trail. I'm trying to get you to see something. That a doctor can help you out of, of pain right here, and that's okay because he's controlling it, and, and he's the professional, right? But... If it's sold on the street, it's illegal. Right? Why? Because it's going to cause you to do something you won't even know you're doing. Same thing alcohol does. That's the only drug that people actually encourage all the time, though. And fight for. But it's exactly what churches are dealing with, perverted mercy. There's no confessing or forsaking. It's just mercy. He's just merciful. But, but that's not biblical. And the only God that exists is the one that wrote the Bible. I'm going to knock it down. Yes! Amen! Ha! Woo! Praise God! Hallelujah! Glory to God! Just let God touch you. Glory to God! They will serve you. This needs to end. I bind you, you foul spirit. You leave this child of God alone. Get, get, scat, and don't come back. Your future is bright. The Lord's here tonight with his anointing to mend, to mend. Whew. Glory to God. Anger gives a place to the devil. I want you to catch that. Anger gives a place to the devil. Are you writing it down? Well, I already wrote it down. Write it down again. Why? Because you have been angry more than once this week. <laughs> okay, today. Since you're challenging me looking at me like that. Anger is a real and present temptation. You say, I don't believe that. Drive out of this parking lot five blocks and come back and tell me you don't believe that. Tell me. Anger is a real temptation every day, multiple times a day, and we're almost oblivious to this, that anger based on man and not righteousness of God. There's such a thing as the righteous anger of God. God's anger is pure and right altogether. And if what makes him mad makes you mad, then you're good. But most of the time, when you're wanting to flip somebody off, it's not his righteousness at all. Let's get real. Amen. you got to know this. You getting in anger gives place to the devil. I don't know. Well, James knew. 
He said it like this in James 1.19. He said, so then, my beloved brethren, hold up. It's a double hit on you. Because anytime you see beloved or brethren in the New Testament, who's it written to? It's written to the church, written to you. So what does that mean? Hey, you, you. See that double hit? You, you. No left. Any question marks of, you talking to me? He's talking to you. Let every man, every man. See, women are like, thank God that says man and not woman. It means mankind. Let every man be swift to anger. People are living on the edge, man. I've made people mad. I don't even know what in the world I did. I told y'all the other day, I went to the car wash. I don't know what the guy's doing over there off in no man's land, but when the guys were saying, come on up, come on up, I'll just do what I'm told, right? That guy pulls up, who do you think you are? Did you not see me over there? I was like, you know, honestly, I didn't, but I mean, let me bless you since I ticked you off. I ain't taking it. Was that a beloved brethren? He may have gone to church, though. Just like you. But he got ticked off. And we think as humans, well, when I'm ticked off, you just better get out of my way. I got a right to tell you. Why? I'm mad. The Bible says be swift to hear. Write this down. Anger affects your hearing. The most valuable thing in your life is to be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. That is the most valuable thing in your life. And if you practice being angry, if it shows on your countenance like I'm going to show you in a minute. See, a lot of people, I'm not angry. Just like Josh last week, I was rolling watching that stream, you know. Your countenance matters. I'm not angry. Yeah, all right. Well, you look like you're ready to chew through the wall and spit it out. Yeah, but I'm not angry. It's just the way I look. Some of you need to work on not looking angry. Because God's looking. Even when no other person is. Why are you so angry? The Bible says be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. You should not be as a Christian in this end time hour. I'm talking a hair trigger. Bro, you get all angry. Now, I'm preaching to myself because I'm telling you right now, one reason I didn't really want to preach this one. Uh, look, look, I'm not, I'm not being arrogant about it. Pornography, that was a battle. I took that on heads up. I built buffers in my life. The longer you go, by the way, in victory, the easier it gets. So I don't mean to be arrogant because some people struggle, and I get that. But, you know, the battle for me is, is this wrath thing, this anger thing. And I'll be honest with you, some people do go to porn because of anger. Because their wife doesn't obey the scripture and withholds her body from the husband. Should I tippy-toe or should I just walk right down? You know, you know what I feel like doing right now? I feel like stepping right, right up here on a chair. I'm just telling you that. It's biblical. Women manipulate their men. Holding their bodies. Uh, you got married for a reason. Uh, you know, you challenge me so much, I'm about to just stand right here and just stare at you. <laughs> you talking about that? My goodness, what does that got to do with anything? A lot. Uh, it has a whole lot to do because, see, here's what happens. Uh, you are angry. That's why you're withholding, number one. So you need to get to the real problem here. You're acting on anger. You're not acting on God because God said in his word, don't withhold. Number two, you're sowing that by withholding to your husband. He's getting angry. He may not talk to you. He may still be sweet to you, but it won't last long. Y'all act like you don't live in a real world in here. Y'all are sitting here. <laughs> Get real with yourself, would you? Anger causes all kinds of marital problems. Anger causes you to shut down, build walls, close out. Get away. 
It's not right. It's an open door to a demon. And you need to get him out of your marriage. You need to get him out of your life. Some people, they were done wrong when they were little kids. And I'll tell you, that angers me so bad because it's a righteous indignation. But what I'm not going to let that happen to me. See, I'm not going to get so angry at that person that my whole life goes way off course because I'm giving over to anger. So I make all kinds of dumb decisions. And I ignore this one for sure. Swift to hear. I don't want to hear it. You notice when you get angry, you don't want to hear nothing. You notice that? It's demonic. You get angry, and what happens? Your spouse tries to talk to you. I'm not going to hear it. You'll even clog your ears. You're so angry. Wow. No wonder you come to church and don't get nothing. That's the way you've been treating your spouse. You get a wide open door to a demon coming right in there. Why would you do that? Two Christians come together in marriage. It's a beautiful thing. One can put a thousand to fly. Two can put ten thousand. You think the devil's good with ten thousand of his forces being taken out by you two together? No. So who's the real enemy? He wants you to think, look at your spouse. It's them. It's them. No, if he's married to someone else, you'd point to them too. You come up in church all mad. You can't hear nothing from God. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. Three keys you got to have. Are you ready for this? Be quick to listen. Be slow to speak. Be slow to wrath. Be quick to listen. This would help your marriage, by the way. You're always wanting to tell your side. Well, I need to meet with pastor again. And all you want to do, is you're just raring to get your side out. I can't remember the last time people that were having trouble, they wanted to come to my office, they say, you know what, I'm going to let them speak first. I'm going to let them speak. Now, anytime I have seen that, because I have seen that, I think to myself, I think I know who, who's really behind the problem here. Because if that person's willing to say, you go ahead and talk, okay, I'll tell Pastor what's going on, wants to tell me your dirty laundry that I don't need to know or care to know. Let, let me, in case you got this all wrong, my anointing is to preach the word to you, to make a disciple out of you, to keep you accountable, but not get all involved with your everyday affairs where I know every little detail of what's going on with you. You got to work this word into your life. I got a life. I've got to live this thing out too. It's just crazy. Well, Pastor, you need to know we were doing this and that, this and that. I don't care. Do the word. Do the word, would you? What do you expect me to tell you in there that I haven't said in here? Do the word. The word says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. That means you're going to be unflagging. You done put a stake and said, I chose her above everyone else, and I'm going to love you. Period. She says, I don't want that. I can't stand you saying I love me. Uh, you know what? I'm going to love you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obey scripture. And now it's time for the other end to obey scripture. You got to be quick to listen, slow to speak. That would help your marriage. I can't wait till I, he, he gets home. I'm going to break off a foot in him. Why? He left his underwear on the floor again. His dirty socks, shoes everywhere. The Bible says. Uh, it is, people don't see it. They don't like the Bible. I mean, they don't when it comes to The woman's to be the keeper of the home. There's an anointing for that. The wife. A wife has an anointing to keep the home. Oh, you, that's old school. You know, it's Bible, which is, it's, it's already out there in the future from where we are right now. So ain't nothing old about this. This is fresh and new. 
If you want God on the scene, you better stop acting mad all the time. You got a big chip on your shoulder all the time. Everybody sees it. Everybody can see a chip on the shoulder. You, don't tell me you've never seen somebody with a chip on their shoulder. You can see it. They'll walk into the grocery store. Don't even have to get on the chip aisle. <laughs> You'll get one right off the shoulder. They're acting so ridiculous. Sorry. Have you noticed this? I just want you to think. When you're angry, you're quick to talk. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that when you're angry? Let's just use a special. I'm not mad at Aaron, by the way. I'm just, I'm just being real. We, like, we're not arguing at all. We're, we're in love. Praise the Lord. I love it. But this is the deal. I'm, I'm just showing you. That way you don't think I'm talking about you when I'm talking about you. Um, <laughs> when you're angry. I was telling the staff this today. All of a sudden, I can remember all the things she's done that I haven't told her off about yet. I just kept it pinned up. I've kept this pinned up. Where does this come from? So, you know, stop. Where is it coming from? If I'm angry, it's coming from the devil. Because anger fine-tunes your ears to the voice of the enemy. And all of a sudden, you're going to remember every tiny little thing she's ever done that ticked you off. So you unload. You unload. And you think it's them. And the devil came in and is trying to blow up your marriage. And he's being successful. I know this by the Spirit of God. There's some people in this room right now. All you have is a shell of a marriage. You come here, things look good. We all think it's good. I see. I think it's all good, probably even myself. Uh, you can fool everyone. But the facts are this. You got to get the devil out. Out of your marriage. you got to get him out. And stop letting him just come and have his way every day. Just coming in there. It's like you have your paper bag of lunch, right? He comes and he gets it. And you just let him. And he blows it up, pops it in your ear, and laughs at you. Because you're blaming your spouse. It ain't your spouse. This destroys your marriage. It's, it's the devil. And your anger. you got to deal with this, guys. you got to deal with this because anger... All of a sudden, you're, it's like all of a sudden you have this ability to have this really sharp tongue. Like you're normally not a person that cuts people down, but all of a sudden you're talking to I mean, you're just like Zorro up in here. <laughs> you left your Z on their coat and everything, man. You're, you're just going off. It's like, who are you all of a sudden? You remembering things from five years ago? I done forgot about that. I slept since then, right? This happens in people's everyday life. They get angry, and they don't want to tell you what. And once you're angry also, it inflates not just your spouse, because that's not the only people that you get angry with. What happens? You're called to a church like this to come and be planted. Why? When you're planted here, you're going to flourish. Do you think the devil wants you to flourish? No, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Who said that? Jesus, John 10.10. 10. Do you believe the one you follow? He said that. So if, if the Lord said in Psalms 92, verse 13, 14, those that are planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish. They shall be prosperous. They shall still bear fruit in old age. Life gets sweeter when you're planted. Well, who's going to fight you being planted? So why is he going to come? He's going to come through the way somebody treated you, the way somebody did something, the way somebody overlooked you. On and on. I mean, the list is so long up in church. This is why so many people don't come to church and get planted where they're supposed to be. Because you know what? You come up in here and as lovely as all of us are and smile, it's bound to be that if we hang out long enough, you're going to find something to get ticked off about. And that's the point. The devil wants you angry because if he gets you angry, then he plant all these thoughts in you. And when you take those, that's when you become dangerous. That's when you become dangerous. I said I was getting to examples. I didn't even got to one tonight. Ooh. Listen to this. I've got, to, I've got to leave you because this big key that I mentioned a while ago. The wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Here's what you got to catch. When you get angry easily, that makes you unstable. And I'm not talking just because you fly off the hook and you're wild. I'm not talking about that, even though that's true, too. The reason I say this is because of Isaiah 54, 14. Since I know what James said, that the anger and the wrath of man, it's right there still on the screen, James 1, 20, 
does not produce the righteousness of God. And I couple that with Isaiah 54, 14. Here's what I come to this conclusion, that me being angry easily makes me unstable because it says in righteousness. In where? In where? In where? In righteousness you shall be established. That means set and fixed on the rock. Whew! I like that. I like the rest of it too. It says, you shall be far from oppression. Anger brings oppression. Why? Because it does not produce this righteousness of God. But inside this, here's what it looks like. You're far from oppression. You shall not fear. Oh, there's a connection between anger and fear. And from terror. Hmm. For it shall not come near you. Glory to God. I want you to notice Anger connects one to oppression, fear, and terror. Righteousness sets you. It fixes you. It perfects you. You got that? This is worth you coming to hear, right? Look at Psalm 31.1. Let me show you this. This is to the chief musician, a psalm of David. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in... Your righteousness, and the anger of man never works the righteousness of God. So listen, we haven't connected the dots, but our anger has everything to do with our deliverance. I just can't seem to get free of this. I don't know what the deal is. It's because you're angry. And you yield to it. You don't have to yield to it. You don't have to yield to it. There's some great illustrations to prove this in the Bible, but I don't have time to preach them tonight. I want to give you, let's see, what should I give you? Hmm. Oh, shut my notes down. Let me give you one more psalm. You got to catch this. Deliverance here, by the way, before I move from this. Deliver me. You know what that actually means? Show me the escape. Some of you can't escape what the enemy continues to to bring into your life simply because you're angry. In fact, let me say it this way. Anger destroys the delivering power of God's righteousness. Well, once again, thank you so much for tuning in to today's A Television Broadcast. While that does wrap up today's message, that does not conclude the message in its entirety. If you would like to hear the rest of this message, you can head over to acceleratechurch.cc and click on the Sermons tab. Or if you're in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We are located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo. Our service times are Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Hey, if we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next television program.